So good morning, Boom. Um, on one of our last talks, you mentioned the blood pressure stat. Um, and you likened it to a thermostat in, for example, a fridge and how our bodies change our set point um, uh, of blood pressure and heart rate and say even temperature. Um, can you just talk about that in a bit more detail um, and why our bodies might change their blood pressure stat and why that's relevant? Okay, so this concept of a blood pressure stat is one that I've um, developed and used to explain why our blood pressure set point may change after an illness or a process. And the, the way, the, w one of the best ways that I can uh, explain this is to draw an analogy. And so bear with me, Mel. So uh, th there are experiments done by uh, NASA um, on astronauts. And, and, and actually a nice article that I read a number of years ago was an experiment done on some Italian normal volunteers who for a period of greater than 30 days, I think it might be 60 days, they tried to simulate an anti-gravity environment. And the way they simply did this was to lie down flat on a bed. They tilted the bed slightly down so that the head was lower than the legs. And for the entirety of those days, uh, they were held in that position. Now, of course, they needed to eat and do the bodily functions, so there were exceptions, but most of the time throughout the, the, the grueling course of this uh, experiment in the name of science, they were tilted with the head down. And after a period, what they found, which is similar to what they find in astronauts orbiting space, is that the blood volume starts dropping. Now, I know you've asked me a question about blood pressure, but I think the uh, set point control for all of our bodily functions, and that includes blood pressure, blood volume, temperature, the degree of peristaltic movement, which is your gut contractility, whether it's very robustly contractile, i.e. giving you loose motions frequently, or whether it doesn't contract, i.e. giving you constipation. Most of our patients can relate to that because when they have symptoms of long COVID, the the whole group or constellation of symptoms affect multiple systems. And what I'm trying to highlight here is that if you experimented on uh, normal healthy volunteers and kept them with their head slightly lower than their uh, toes for more than 30 days, you'll expect a blood volume drop. And so and the purpose of that experiment was to, to stop that bo the body's response to standing up for 30 days. So it would lose the ability to to regulate to standing up, is that right? Correct, so we are bipedal animals, which means we should be standing up for most of the waking day. And there is a very complex series of neurohormonal, so neurolog neurons, which are your nerve cells, hormonal, and that means your hormones, uh, regulation between your brain, your circulation, your heart, and your kidneys. And, and effectively, if you are standing up, and it, it boils down to this, you have to fight gravity because if you're standing up, your head is the highest point in your body and your heart is higher than your legs. But your legs are huge reservoirs of blood because they've got two vessels called the femoral veins. And when you stand up and blood starts to pool down into your lower limbs, your heart will empty and when the heart empties it doesn't squeeze as much volume per stroke that is to say the stroke volume reduces and when the stroke volume reduces then the receptors in some of our circulatory organs the blood vessels in the neck for example in the carotid region here in your neck will sense that reduction in blood volume with each stroke and will then activate that series of neural humoral complex activation to get your adrenaline and cortisol levels slightly higher so your blood um, pressure is increased because your heart is beating stronger and faster but also very subtly go back to the kidneys and get the kidneys to activate what's called the renin angiotensin aldosterone system and that is a mouthful but it really is complex because the kidneys then with higher levels of aldosterone will reabsorb sodium or salt 
and when the kidneys reabsorb more salt and it makes you produce less urine, you hang on to more fluid, your blood volume expands, your stroke volume expands, and then your blood pressure improves, and then you downregulate this on a constant basis. So it is actually helpful to put some tension on your system by standing up most days. That's what we were designed as bipedal animals. That's and when we and when we stand up, we have a high level of renin, angiotensin, aldosterone, mm. which in a circadian manner, when we lie down at night, is relaxed. Mm. Stand up again, it comes on. So coming back to the question, why could somebody with a chronic illness suddenly develop this? Well, if you have significant symptoms of COVID, one simple explanation could be you're flawed, literally on in a bed or sofa because you're coughing and you have a high temperature. You don't feel like being upright and you spend two or three weeks relatively horizontal. Like those astronauts that you just talked like about. Like those astronauts and those, those students or those normal controls in that Italian study. And over the period of two or three weeks with that supine position or lying flat position, plus whatever COVID can do directly on the autonomic nervous system, I think you drop blood volume. And therefore, your blood volume stat in your brain, this concept of a stat akin to a thermostat, starts to re reach a different set point. Mm. And so instead of circulating at five liters uh, per, per minute, which is the, the normal circulating volume, you might circulate at 4.8 because you have only got... 4.8 liters of blood circulating around for a normal healthy size grown-up obviously fluid is something we talk about every time isn't it and we it's the it's the one thing we talk about almost with every patient in our clinic so actually for then for somebody to have less fluid in their body that means they're going to have to drink even more to even feel at their normal set point is that right exactly right and there is a caveat because you could argue or you could ask as a patient why don't I just drink five liters today? Won't that mm. solve my, my problem? Mm. And the answer is not quite, because if you drank five liters today, you would just pee five liters out. Mm. And so it's not only a fluid issue, it's actually a fluid regulation issue. It's a, it's a fluid stat or blood volume stat issue. And the way to dial up this fluid is actually not by drinking five or 10 liters in one day, but it's by drinking two and a half to three and a half liters every day for mm. the next two months with a bit more salt if your blood pressure is on the low or low normal side. Because although unfortunate as this is, long COVID has turned down your dial, your blood volume stat by 200 mils, you can't have a spanner or a drug that just goes into the deep brain and crank it up again. You yeah. cannot do that. So yeah. the only way to do that is a slowly, slowly approach by continuing continuing to challenge your body to hold on to, let's say, five mils more of fluid per day. So right. if you drank three liters and you peed or you lost from breathing or sweating 2.95 liters, for example, or 2.995 liters, you're holding on to five mils or 50 mils of fluid every day and over time, you will build back your fluid stat. And that complex system that you're talking about with the kidneys and the hormones, that changes over time when it gets used to the slightly higher volume that you're drinking. So then you- Exactly, exactly. So the, the long COVID recovery, unfortunately, is a slow one, but fortunately does, does occur. And that's why most patients with long COVID eventually recover, provided they know how to take the small steps on a day-to-day -day basis and reset the expectations uh, of their improvement rate. Mm. Because it is, it is literally going to be a long readjustment period for your body to get used to these new set points and to bring it back to the old set point. Yeah. Okay. And so just to summarize, that is not something that's going to happen overnight. So if you have these symptoms you can't just think right well I'll be back to normal by Monday and I can go back to playing my hockey match and working a 15 hour day it's something that your body is going to have to adjust to over time so maybe be a bit kind on your body and yourself as to not expect immediate recovery that is an amazing uh, observation Mel because when we talk about the autonomic nervous system and the subconscious brain, we I've discussed some of the physical components that it controls, such as blood pressure, temperature, gut regulation. 
but let me tell you what controls your subconscious brain the most and going back to the analogy of giving the speech what controls it are thoughts expectations uh hope gratitude things that are going to positively influence your autonomic nervous system and dial down this over exuberant fright or flight response which are causing us so many of your symptoms is going to be a multifaceted approach so focus on hydration and salt intake if your blood pressure is low but also focus i think on a top-down approach which is having very good thought processes that can influence you in a positive way hmm. and that is anchored by a realistic expectation of recovery not tomorrow or monday but maybe in four or six weeks hmm. and when your expectations are met with reality i.e you're recovering day by day slowly by slowly you have a much greater chance of advancing improvement in your subconscious autonomic nervous system. It's when you constantly get pushed back with frustration to say, I think I can go back on Monday. I think I can do a bit more. I think I can, I can go for a run today. And then you go for a run and you're flawed for three days. The whole world collapses around you because your expectation and reality gap is very big. Yes. And so you become down um, or, or your emotions change to a very negative state. And that unfortunately influences the autonomic nervous system in a detrimental way. That's great. Thank you. You've really, you've really clarified that. Thanks very much, Boone. Take care, Mel.